Hello, David Spark. I'm here at uh, Streaming Media West Conference reporting for Ignite Technologies. And Ignite, if you don't know, is a content delivery network designed for the enterprises. So my coverage is mostly for the enterprise space. First, let me talk to you about uh, the future of education. This was a topic that came up a lot here at the conference. And a uh, couple of issues. One is students are now starting to create e-portfolios. They are all the assets that they're creating as a student are being put into a portfolio and this sort of is a questionable thing because mostly school work has been traditionally rather private but now it's being exposed to the world and well you know when you're a student you're really not that good at what you're doing and also you often change your major so we'll see how this plays itself out as the students of today are in tomorrow's workforce. Uh, Printed books, are they going to end and will everything become digital and will they be attached to video and audio assets? And then the other issue is, well, printed books have a really good life cycle for making money. You know, every few years a new edition of the book comes out. Can you create a life cycle like that for digital assets and generate income maybe on a subscription basis to be seen? The major, major subject though uh, in the enterprise space was the future of specifically webcasting. And the number one issue there is the video's got to look good. More importantly, it's got to sound good. If I can't hear it, I don't care if it looks good. And if I can hear it, I want it to look good. And then after that, we can worry about other issues. Um, they're transmitting most of this content through about just 300, 400 kilobits per second. As a result, HD, true HD is not the issue. Even though people will bounce that term around, what they really mean is HQ. High quality video, not true HD video. But there are some cases you do need HD video, like when you uh, have a video press room and you need to make that video available, say broadcast networks want access to that video. Uh, other issues that came up, if you're distributing video in an enterprise, the number one concern you have is the firewall. How are you going to get through that sucker? And for just traditional security in terms of distributing it, there are many options of doing that. Uh, you know, just uh, via IP address, uh, via specific referral, or just putting out a link there that's not indexable by the search engines, and that's better known as security through obscurity. Uh, other issues that came up, oh, this, I love this. When you add a social media layer to an enterprise video, so just internally people are watching it, it increases engagement, no surprise there, but it also increases viewership because more people join in on as the video starts to go. In, in the first half, you'll see that the viewership climbing, and then the most interesting fact is that people's enjoyment of the video actually increases. Videos get rated higher when there's a social media element added to it. Um, lower production quality video is perfectly okay in the enterprise because it, it creates a more reality, a more uh, employee to employee conversation. And companies are starting to use metrics now uh, in the enterprise space to learn more about what makes a video good. Like when people drop off halfway through, they report that information back to the producers and content creators and say, hey, you should know this at, at five minutes, what you did was not entertaining to the audience. Two last issues I want to talk about is the different models for content delivery networks. Traditionally, it's just selling bits, but what if you didn't focus on bits, but you focused on results? Because that's really what people care about. And if you're using that online video network for, say, sales training, what if you translated maybe a bonus into, hey, if your sales go up because of the sales training we provided via video, we get a bonus as well. One company did that, I've got more information about that. And the last issue is making your video discoverable. Now, one thing is creating a curation environment for your staff members to each be curating a different segment of, that's of interest to your audience, don't have everybody curating the same thing. But lastly, when you're creating stuff that's searchable and visible within your own environment, because you're going to want to do that, you have to make sure the page is indexable, and most importantly, if you want them to actually see the video, actually include the word video, because believe it or not, that is a very, very hot search term. Other thing to concern yourself is really, really good thumbnails. Anyways, last but not least, for more coverage from Ignite Technologies, go over, go over to the Ignite Tech blog at ignitetech blog, and there's also more coverage over at Streaming Media West.